Hi, I'm Becky and I'm doing this video for Creative Expressive Therapies at Murray Hall Community Trust and basically I'm going to introduce you to almost like a homemade coping box, okay? So, coping boxes are really helpful when a lot of the time we may find ourselves using quite negative coping strategies, whereas if we were to have a coping box everything's essentially in one place and everything within the box is a variation of a distraction technique okay so you'll see on the internet that you can buy coping boxes or sensory toys equipment stuff like that but obviously they cost a lot of money now sometimes we might not necessarily want to tell people that we're having difficulty with coping or it might be that we don't have a lot of money to be able to buy different types of coping things. So the coping box I'm going to introduce you to is a lot of a wide variety of different types of objects, which you might naturally find either around your home or if you've got, like, say, an office in your home, things like that. OK, so this is a coping box. OK, now it hasn't got to stay in a box. OK, it can go in a drawer, it can go in a cupboard, it can go in a bag or even under your bed if you want. OK, but the whole idea of it is that you have something physically where it's all contained. So if you ever were to have that over sensation of an emotion or a feeling, then you can physically go and get it and use a distraction technique within it. OK, so first of all, we have bubble wrap. OK. Bubble wrap, unless you have a texture, texture aversion, um, normally, I don't care who you are, how old you are, or where you're from, we all love a good bit of bubble wrap, okay? So we can pop it, squeeze it, tear it, um, and, and it's a nice kind of visual sound as well, and we can concentrate on popping the individual little bubbles, so love bubble wrap. We have an elastic band for two principles. The first is, if we are having a feeling of, say, numbness, um, it can give you a good hard snap, okay? Now, it will hurt, but it brings us back round into the here and now, okay? The second is, if we're ever in, say, a state of anxiety, at times, if you can keep your hands busy, so it's something to play with, something to fiddle with, and it reduces your internal anxiety by having something to essentially play with. The difficulty with an elastic band is always be conscious, but you don't cut off the circulation to your fingers. Okay, so do it very wisely. We have blue tack, not for sticking up posters, <laughs> um, but basically because it's tactile. OK, so it's on the principle of if you've ever seen anyone who gets quite angry or quite frustrated and they've got chewing gum in their mouth and that their mouth goes like this all the time. So it's. Well, don't put this in your mouth. OK, just need to make that statement first. Sorry. Put it between your thumb and your forefinger. OK, and you can stretch it, you can squeeze it, you can pull it apart and it's indestructible. So it will always mold back together. OK, so if you have a tendency to get quite angry or quite frustrated, quite a, quite a harsh emotion, blue tack's fantastic. And you can always put a small amount in your pocket, OK, but take it out before you put it in the wash. So, yeah, stretch, squeeze, squash, um, rip it apart, indestructible. OK, we have a journal, OK? A journal is an amazing thing, OK? Now, if you want to, you can share your journal, um, but really it's for you, okay? So it's for you to be able to express how you feel, okay? There is no right or wrong with the way in which you keep your journal. So you can draw in it, you can write poems, you can write sentences, you can write single words, um, or sometimes as well, you can actually scratch into the journal, so through separate pages. Um, and it's just a way of having that ability to get out that expression, okay? Journals are also very good um, because at times we will have things which we're calling 
intrusive thoughts. So they're thoughts that pop in our head and we really don't know why they're there, but they're thoughts that can be really damaging and really hurtful to us. So the idea of a journal is put it into a journal, yeah, so whether it's a poem, drawing, scratching, etc. When you physically close your journal, it gives you a moment breathing space, okay? So then you can put your journal to one side, take that deep breath in, take it out, and you know that you've got a moment of clarity, okay? At least for the next few moments. You have a pen. Number one for writing in your journal. Um, but number two, there's something called the Butterfly Project. Now, the Butterfly Project is um, intended for people who may use self-harm, uh, which is a negative coping strategy. Okay. So the Butterfly Project can be used for any type of obsessive or reoccurring behaviour. Um, the one thing to point out is if you don't like butterflies, it hasn't got to be a butterfly. It can be a pit bull terrier or a big smiley face. Okay. The idea and the principle behind it is still the same. So in our society, it's very, very difficult for us to be able to recognize how far we've come. Okay. Or to have that sense of internal pride in ourselves. So for example, if I ask you to name 10 negative things about yourself, normally we can do that quite quite often so it's like one two three four five six seven eight nine ten very very easily if i ask you to name three to four really strong positive attributes that you have we struggle okay so that's where the pen and the butterfly project comes into play okay so you would physically draw so i'm going to draw a smiley face rather than a butterfly a smiley face okay and Say for every time that I do not um, engage in a negative coping strategy, yeah, I will retrace it, okay? And it's something that I can clearly see all of the time, okay? And basically, it is a physical reminder of how far you have come. So say, for example, if the negative coping mechanism is something such as self-harm, okay? If it's been a period of a day, a week, a month, or something like that, or even for some people it's a matter of hours, okay? We tend to lose sight of just how far we have come. Whereas when you have that physical reminder, you can look at it, you can see it, and you can have that start of that internal pride Okay, um, if you were to say use a negative coping mechanism, then you would wash it off and you'd start again. Okay, um, you don't have to have it on your hand, you can have it anywhere really. Um, but again, it ha it's a visual prompt. Okay, what else have we got? Oh, stress balls. Okay, so um, I know you might not find this around your home, um, however. Um, if you do have a stress ball, they're great because obviously you can squeeze them, you can throw them, not at people, but at walls and things like that. And they are perfectly indestructible unless you have a dog. Never, ever, ever let your dog play with one of these because they will destroy it within seconds. Okay. Um, if you don't have a stress ball, because it's that whole sensation of getting quite angry, um if you have anything which is tactile so like this is a lovely little heart um and it's a little woolen heart so again sometimes bringing yourself into the here and now and into the physical moment if we start to feel sad um low but very low negative emotion if we have something like this which we can almost zone out to so whether it's some people like labels, labels in clothes or um, a certain type of fabric, um, whereas this is just a nice little heart, which you can, you know, basically put between your thumb and your forefinger um, and start to touch. And it's nice and it's calming and you can automatically start to feel your heart rate start to decrease a little bit. And then with that, any type of anxiety or anger or sadness might start to disappear. Um, these hearts are actually made by a wonderful um, little kind of crochet army 
um, and it is called Take Heart, and they're on Instagram, okay? So if you know of anybody who may need a small little heart as a reminder that they're not alone, okay, um, you can have a little look on Instagram, okay? And there's also tutorials on how to make them, okay? So, the last thing is this. And this is one of my favourites, okay? Yes, I'm aware it looks like a plastic bag, but it's an ice cube bag, okay? So the whole principle of this is fill it with water. Obviously, you put it in your freezer. This will only work if you're at home because ice cubes don't travel very well, okay? Um, but if you know what your trigger is, so just before your negative coping strategy, if you know what your trigger is, so whether it's a memory, whether it's an argument with somebody, whether it's a certain... Uh, type of feeling or emotion run to the freezer run to the freezer pop an ice cube and physically hold it okay it will hurt because it's cold but then your hand will start to go numb okay and as your hand starts to go numb the ice will melt and as the ice melts it will run down your inner wrist and when it starts to do that it will send your whole arm into almost like um like a goose pumply kind of spasm um, so it's 100% a distraction technique. It's a really, really useful technique. Okay. The other option is when you put the water in the ice cube bag to fill it with food colouring. Okay. So at least then you've got different types of, um, just something a bit different really. And again, it's a second distraction technique. So those are the basics of different distraction techniques that are in our coping box. Um, which can be made very easily from home. Um, there's other things as well which we add in. So stuff like um, affirmation pebbles. Okay, so it's literally just a pebble from the garden. Um, which you then either paint or you can add. Um, this one's just done in pen. So it's follow your dreams, stuff like that. And then you can either place it somewhere prominently. Um, or you can place it in your garden. Or at the moment, what, what I've done. Um, with the children is we've done some like thank you be brave be strong and we've, we've put that in front of the postman okay so although we can't physically say hi uh, we can wave through the window and they they have these lovely little pebbles um, and then the second are these so these are little worry dolls okay as you can see these ones are made out of little pegs and then just wool um, little bits of collage and obviously pen okay there is another video to show you how to make uh, woolen worry dolls and then additional to that we have things which are um, affirmation bracelets now you can buy some but these are just made out of paper okay so again if you have a printer great if not you can write them um, just on a piece of paper stick it together so this one says I get better every single day okay um, but there are some other ones so things like what am I thankful for today uh, be brave be strong or I am strong you know again back to that thing of we need to have be able to have that sense of ownership of our own positive emotion and basically to have that internalized to us okay we can normally identify the strengths in other people, but we do find it very, very difficult to find the strengths in ourselves. Okay. So, um, I kind of hope that that's been a bit of a brief overview of different types of distraction techniques, which you can either put into, like I said, a box, a bag, um, a drawer at home. Um, there's a majority of things that you find around the home. Okay. So, yeah. See you soon. Have a good day.